pull them out. Uh, so we're going to look at genealogy of Jesus. So, uh, did you, Rose, did you raise your hand when you said you explored a little of your family history? You know, I know my side of the family up through my parents, my grandfather, and I don't, I don't even go back as far as my great grandparents. But some of you might. But have any of you done further? Please, okay, please, please share. Have you learned anything from it? Yeah. That's one of the reasons people do that. Just you know, where, where did we come from? Where were our our roots, so to speak? Where do you know? Did we come from England, France, Germany? Or where where did we come from? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rick, what did? So and what did you learn? Uh huh. Distant relative of Princess Diana. Third cousin once removed. Third cousin once removed. Okay. And uh, prophecies conquer Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. My mom's side is Scott. Okay. Jim, did you learn anything about your family? And there's different reasons, I suppose, why people do this. Uh, one is just to know a little bit more about the family and the roots and the origins and things like that. Are there other reasons that you could think of why people would want to delve into their backgrounds and their genealogy and their roots, so to speak? Health issues. Health issues. Has the doctor ever asked you? You all look pretty healthy. But the doctor will ask me, did your mother have this? Did your father have that? And uh, did your grandmother sometimes th diseases and things like that skip generations? Uh, diabetes, for example, might skip from one to the other or, or what have you. So sometimes it's good to look back a little bit and find out about the health issues. I remember uh, Forrest Barr, uh, who was a member here some years ago, he was big into it. He looked back and he said, Pastor, I come uh, from a, a family of criminals. <laughs> he, he told me about all his family that was in Ohio and, and how they all had been in jail for something or other. So, and, but Rick, who all want, want to be ready to bow a little bit, he comes from a, the royal line. He comes from the royal line, so, yeah. So, and, I, and I would imagine there are times that... Uh, just about anything is done in this world. There's always the negative side of it. Some people maybe find some way to, uh, or the criminal element to exploit uh, their background. Uh, if I win the lottery, I might find I have more cousins than I ever knew, uh, what, what have you. Or maybe there's reason to look back and say, I, I should have part of this inheritance or that inheritance, and who knows, who knows. So we're going to look at uh, uh, the biography or geology, I, no, I shouldn't say biography, the genealogy of Jesus. Genealogy is an interesting word. Uh, you see the word gene in there. You know, genes as they're passed down from generation to generation, even the word generation. Uh, we think of the Bible word genesis. Gen, genesis, the beginnings, in the beginning. And so we see uh, that that word means beginnings and origins. And uh, logos uh, means word, genealogy. A bibliography is a list of books at the end of a term paper or something. A genealogy is a list of your, your genes, a list of your uh, uh, relatives uh, uh, down through the ages. So we'll look at Jesus' family family tree. Um, I have to find out what I did with my. Huh, maybe this is the one. Is 
just the one? Yeah. Ancestry.com is big. You send in your DNA. You can find out a little bit about your origin. This is the Family Search Center. Anyone know where that's located? Utah. Utah. Why Utah? The The Mormon Church is big into genealogies. They have genealogies and lists of people and records from America, and I think I read 118 other countries in the world. And the reason they're into that to some degree is because of the sacred rites that they perform in their beliefs, uh, the sacred rites they perform in their temples. For example, baptism for the dead. If you were born before Joseph Smith and the new revelation that the angel Moroni brought, uh, how can you possibly be saved or redeemed? Well, I would be baptized for you. I would be baptized for some of my dead relatives. Also, uh, you can also be united permanently in marriage and to your family uh, for all eternity through a ritual that you go through at the temple. And so you'll want to know who your children are and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Um, and so Carolyn would be united to me for forever and forever. A smile. That was a smile. That was not a <laughs> chuckle. A smile that came to her face. So, uh, and so, uh, yeah, a lot of the uh, the searches for uh, one's past uh, make use of this family. In fact, uh, just so you know, there is a Christmas sale on. I saw on their site for forty nine dollars you can access their records. For sixty nine dollars you can become a VIP member, and uh, you can do that for the next year or so, and for $129, you also are able to do even more. Ancestry.com has the same thing. You can buy membership in these different genealogical societies. So we search for our roots, searching for our roots. Ooh, and we're going to look at Jesus' roots. This is... uh, some time ago, we had someone from our neighborhood that found out I was a pastor. He came to church. He and his wife came to church here for oh, probably six, seven months. Uh, did not eventually join the church or anything like that, but uh, we were a bit too conservative for their liking. But he took an interest in the goose. He said, Pastor, I want to search out who your family is and everything else. And so he went to work on that. And this is some of the results from that. I actually have in my file in my desk a 15-page listing of relatives stemming from Andreas Andrew Guzzi, born in 1828 near Bromberg, Prussia. And uh, this was that's when it was Prussia. Actually, before that, it was part of Germany. Uh, This area now is part of Poland. So, but uh, back to 1828, uh, and that's where, and he married Renata, who was born on the very first day of the year in 1828. In 1854, uh, that's when they were married. He died in February of 1914 in Kleiman, Wisconsin. So he emigrated here to the United States. He survived by 32 grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. And because of the 32 grandchildren, that's why I am on page 15. <laughs> because that it just goes through all his children and then all his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I think I am the sixth generation generation number six of the Guzis from this time. Uh, I don't have anything that goes back beyond beyond that. So, yeah. So, if oh, I was going to ask you to look at your sheet there. Um, some questions. Who is Jesus' father? God. God the Father. 
The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father. When was Jesus born? Okay, <laughs> Jesus was born on Christmas Eve and we celebrate his birthday on Christmas Day, okay? When was Jesus born? When was the Son of God born? He's eternal, yeah. Without beginning and without end, right? Without beginning, without end. This is from Hebrews chapter seven. I chose this one. Uh, this is a section that talks about Melchizedek, the priest that greeted Abraham after he brought back the people of Sodom and Gomorrah that had been carried off into captivity and the spoils taken. He brought them all back. And Melchizedek comes out and blesses Abraham. And Melchizedek is sort of a mysterious figure. And if you read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 especially, You'll read a lot about Melchizedek, and Jesus is compared to Melchizedek in this way. Um, he said, Melchizedek, we don't know anything about his father or mother. Without genealogy, there's nothing that tells us uh, from whom he was born about Melchizedek's family tree. Without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God. He remains a priest forever. And so um, resembling the Son of God, the Son of God is without beginning of days or end of life, uh, eternal, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And his mother, earthly mother Mary, and his brothers and sisters, Martha. Uh, not Martha, but uh, Mary. Mary. Mary was the mother, Mary the mother. Mary and Martha were friends of Jesus. Yeah. So um, just a couple of verses here. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So who is Jesus saying is his family? Yeah, that's us, we're his family. So on the one side, you un we understand this, God the Father, God the Son, who's without beginning or end, and a spiritual family. Both he who is holy and the one who makes men holy is, are of the same family, it tells us in Ephesians, okay? But at the same time, we, we know that he did have a mother when he was born of the Virgin Mary, right? And coming to his hometown, he's preaching in the synagogue. He began teaching the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things that they took offense at him? They couldn't understand how he could speak as, and teach as he did. But they speak of Mary and Jesus' brothers and sisters. So evidently Joseph and Mary had, obviously it would seem, other children. Other children. Half brothers and sisters because of the fact that he didn't have a human father, right? Is that what you're talking about? He didn't, but they did. Yeah, so. yeah. So in that in that sense, half. Yeah, very good. Thank you. All right. So let's. Uh,
Let me find my place where I am. We want to read and look at Matthew chapter 1. Let's look at Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. And we're also going to look at Luke chapter 3. So if someone want to read the first 17 verses of Matthew uh, chapter 1? Carolyn said, sure. Take, go away. Okay. Go ahead. And it, when you get to names that you don't know how to pronounce it, I was always told, just read, don't stumble, just say whatever you want to say, and no one will know the difference. <laughs> Yeah, just roll, roll off your tongue. So uh, everybody, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, the first 17 verses. Eric, if you would please. There you go. Hey, that's great. You get a round of applause for that. Now, we sort of went through there a little laboriously because we want to compare that to Luke chapter 3. So put your finger there, however you want to save that place, and go to Luke 3, verse 21. Luke 3, verse 21. And see if you pick up on any differences. And uh, we'll just uh, take a look at this, and I, I'll be adventurous and plead for your patience and endurance. But uh, in Luke uh, 3, verse 21, when the, all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open. The Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. 
Now, Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Matat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janna, the son of Joseph, the son of Matthias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Ezlai, the son of Nagai, the son of um, Maeth, the son of Mattathias, the son of Simeon, the son of Josek, the son of Yoda, the son of Joanan, the son of Risa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adi, the son of Kosam, the son of Elmadan, the son of Ur, the son of Joshua, the son of Eliezer, the son of Josam, the son of Matat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Mena, the son of Matatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Solomon, the son of Nation, the son of Aminadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, uh, the son of Sirug, the son of Roy, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of uh, Genan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of uh, Mahalalel, the son of Kenan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Okay, so my apologies for stumbling over some of those. Uh, light is interesting. Um, do you notice any differences? Anything, anything stand out? Well, Jim? Matthew was a tax collector and he did this position. Yeah. So I tend to believe Okay. The names are very different, okay. very, very yeah. different. Two, two lines, yeah, and uh, and one of the explanations is what you said. Luke says so. It was thought he was the son of Joseph, and then many believe he goes on with the lineage according to Mary, and uh, Mary also was of the tribe of David. Judah and the. A descendant of David, yeah, a descendant of David. Yeah. Both Joseph and Mary, interesting, were descendants of David. Uh, why was that important? Why would it be important for Joseph to be a descendant of David? Well, why did both Joseph and Mary have to be from David? <laughs> well, okay, but why was it important for him to, Joseph especially to be from the line of David? Okay, he wasn't the father, but legally, so it was thought, and when they went to Bethlehem to register for the census, whose name do you think was on the, the register? Uh, you know, so legitimately, legally, you know, we have Joseph as the father. It's interesting that that was the same way it was in Antigua. They, there, there was just not a lot of marriage or anything like that in Antigua, except in the, in the churches. And 
but yet there were many, many children. And even at St. John's Lutheran Church, uh, any child that was born out of wedlock uh, took the father's name, which made it interesting going there and serving because you soon, soon learn that uh, Johnny Smith, uh, who came to church uh, with his mother, but her, the mother's name was not Smith. It was something else. And all the children and all the mothers had different names because they all, the children always took the name of their father. And so it was a little confusing at times. I would say a good half or two-thirds of the congregation, the children's names were different from the mothers. So, so the children all the same the, the, all the, No, you had 300 children, but different fathers. Like you would, you would, you would have a, a child by this woman, and you might have a child by this woman, oh. but each of your children would have your name. You would be the legal father. You would be regarded as the legal father. That's the way the law worked. You are the legal father of those children. And they get your name. They do not take their mother's name. Does he take care of them? And Does he? Some, some do and some don't. I mean, it, w it was interesting. It just, and the many that came to have their children baptized uh, and, and enrolled their children at the school it was a great mission opportunity because very often as the mom and dad, so to speak, sat there and you interviewed them for enrollment in the school, you found out they really weren't married, but they had this child in common. Some of them still lived together, some of them didn't live together. I had one that three weeks before I left, that came, uh, the man and woman came to have their baby baptized. And uh, just to indicate, you know, I said, you're a member? I, have I met you? I've been here a year, over a year. And she said, yeah, I, I, I went to the school I was 15 years ago. And, uh, and Pastor Richards baptized my other child four years ago. And now she had another child by a, another man. And so not only would her children have a different name from hers, but the two children would have different names from each other. Because this was father and father, so it was interesting. And then and I, you know, just going on, the unique situation, the opportunity to share Jesus' love, um, just had them fill out the baptism form. One of the questions, are you, are you married? And I looked at the form and she checked yes, and she checked no, and I said, <laughs> well, which, which is it? Hey, which is it? She said, well, I'm not married, but he is. So, so you have uh, just, it, it, was, it was a different kind of ministry. And, uh, but that's, that's the culture. And uh, you work in that and you share the love of Christ. And, and uh, I think one of the, the joys was that uh, the Sunday we left to see different people in church and to have one person that had been coming for nine months after I baptized their baby. They lived together, uh, Jamoya and, and Candace, um, said, how do I join the church? How do we get married? How do we join the church? I said, so, yeah, so. But to have Joseph as the legal father uh, and the lineage through, went to because they were the house and line of David. You know. And then Mary, of course, being the mother of Jesus uh, yeah, from David's line. So any other differences? Maybe one is um, through <coughs> Joseph's line. And you notice that's the, also the royal line. That's also the royal line. And even though Mary goes seemingly back to David, you don't read the names of all the kings. Uh, her, her lineage seems more common. Maybe there's something in there for us too. Jesus came from just common people. Anything different else? Yeah, yeah. Women, mentioned in, uh, women are mentioned in the one, one from Matt. Very good. 
Abraham, yeah. And they, they're actually backwards, aren't they? One starts back then in Abraham and the like. Any thoughts why Matthew would start? Oh, please. Yeah, once you get to David, once you get to David, then everything falls back into place because David is the son of Jesse. And so so you got these two lines from David coming back. And, yeah. Well, according to what Matthew said, there's 42 generations. Yeah. I didn't bother to count the number here, but uh, I don't know if it's the same. No, it's not. Okay. Good observation. Yeah, and, you know, the, we are Americans, and we, this, is, this is the way we think. But the Jews, uh, when the angel came to Mary, uh, he said, you're going to have a baby, you'll name him Jesus, and the Lord will give unto him the throne of his father, David. His father... No, he'll give him the throne of his great, 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 grandfather. So he'll give him the throne of his father, David. The Hebrew doesn't have those words, those distinctions between great grandfather, grandfather, and the like. And sometimes it'll just skip generations. I'm, you know, and even the Jews spoke of themselves as children of Abraham. So it, it uh, pardon? Children of Abraham that were still alive, right? That's the way they looked at it. Well, the, the Jews consider them children of Abraham. Jesus said, "You're not children of Abraham. You're children of the devil." Remember how he spoke to them? Yeah, you know, he talked about anyone who sins a slave to sin. and said, oh, "We're not slaves to anybody. We are. We are the children of Abraham." Jesus said, "You're not of your children. You're of your." Father, the the devil. But yeah, you know, they spoke to themselves as children of Abraham. They're very proud of that, that heritage. But sometimes the genealogies will skip generations, and uh, so. How is it in the Greek? It's like the English. Yeah, yeah, just like the English. So. These are, this is a picture of the different gospel writers. A little fuzzy, it's the best one I could find. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you come to realize that each of the gospel writers wrote for a different audience and with a different purpose in mind. Matthew wrote especially for the Jews and um, to show that Jesus was the promised Messiah. And so he begins with whom? Who does he begin his begin the genealogy with? Abraham. Begins with the father of the Jews. I'll make of you a great nation. That's where it starts. And if you read through the Gospel of Matthew, you're going to read sixty times. Thus it was fulfilled what was written by the prophets, again and again and again. You will see that phrase only once in the Gospel of Mark. But Matthew's audience, very much writing for the Jews, say, look at his line, this is the promised Savior. This is the, I think the very first verse says, uh, the descendant of Abraham and even the son of David, the very first verse, Matthew 1, verse 1, uh, speaks of Matthew and, and David. Matthew and David. Luke, on the other hand, addresses his gospel and the book of Acts, which is another book that he wrote, to Theophilus. And uh, it seems also to those around Theophilus, the Greek world, the Gentiles. Luke was the one who also went out with the apostle Paul, sharing the gospel on Paul's, with Paul on Paul's missionary journeys. And so his gospel directs very much toward the, the Gentiles and the like. And so he starts and he goes all the way back to Adam. And Jesus is the savior of, of all, all the descendants of Adam, not just back to Abraham. 
But he goes all the way back to Adam, who he calls also then the son of God, because God made him. He was a creation of God. And uh, uh, so Matthew is the man that came to uh, symbol of a man. Uh, Luke has the symbol of an ox, a beast, a burden. Jesus, the, the servant of all mankind. Uh, John is uh, an eagle. That's the symbol that was given to him because some say that, and it's true, that his gospel compared to the other three, his soars in a different way. It's very doctrinal and pictures Jesus very much as the son of God. Uh, these three are called the synoptic gospels, these three, uh, because synoptic, because they're seen, that's what it means, synoptic, they're seen in the same way. They're speaking of the life of Christ and a lot of the uh, uh, words and works of Jesus are very common in those three Gospels. They get the Gospel of John, there is a lot that's different from the other three Gospels. And very much directed to, uh, John says at the end, these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life through his name. So the Gospel writers had a different purpose, and that's why Matthew... Uh, starts with Abraham to show the Jews this is the Messiah, this is the promised Savior. And Luke goes all the way back for his Gentile readers, all the way back to Adam. Jesus Christ is the Savior of every descendant of Adam, of everyone from the very beginning. So. Okay. So different branches on the tree. Maybe we can just look at the genealogy a little bit of Jesus. I should watch. Oh, we got time. Okay, there are the women. And here are the men in yellow. Let's just take them one by one. Um, see how fast we can just throw something out there. What do we remember about Abraham? No. From Ur. Yeah. Ur of the Chaldees. He was called by God to be the father of a great nation. Okay. Anything else you remember about Abraham that you read in the Bible? Yeah, even though he's called the father of the, the Jews and a man of great faith, and God praises him for that, yet he showed his, his weakness. There were times he doubted. He said, God, I know that my servant is going to inherit everything. And God said, no. And he takes him out, shows him the stars. Your descendants are going to be like this. Yeah. And then, then uh, he and Sarah, they decide they're going to have a, a baby in a different way. Abraham is going to have relations with Sarah's handmaid, Hagar. And, okay, okay. So uh, Abraham, the man of faith, who sacrificed his son Isaac there on the mountaintop, or was about to, uh, and yet at the same time had his sins too, right? And his doubts and his weaknesses. Isaac, anything about Isaac? Not much in the Bible about Isaac. <coughs> had twins, Jacob and Jacob and Esau. And which one did God say is going to receive the promise? The younger, the, yeah, not the older, but the younger, yeah. And yeah, yeah. And yet when Isaac gets old, whom is he going to bless and give the blessing to? Who's, who's going to give the uh, the blessing to in the end. He was going to give it to Esau. He said, go out and make me some stew and then I will bless you. And it's because Jacob did what? Pretended and he came in and trick, tricked his dad. And yeah, Isaac thought he was blessing Esau even though 
this man of faith in the line of Jesus, this, this Isaac knew better, but he's still going to bless the son that he loved, Esau. Jacob, Jacob something else. We already mentioned him tricking his father. And uh, anything else about Jacob? Yep, and he was running away from, uh, from Esau. Esau said, I'm going to kill you for what you did. And he ran away, and that first night on his way to Uncle Laban's house, he was laying out there and put his head on the rock and saw the vision of the ladder, Jacob's ladder, right? Jacob's ladder. Anything else about Jacob? Didn't he have uh, two different wives? He had... He worked uh, seven years for Rachel, but Laban pulled a fast one, remember? And after they were married, he pulled back the veil to give her a kiss, and <laughs> it was Leah, okay? And then Laban said, well, if you work another seven years, you can have Rachel for your other wife. And so he had children by Rachel and Leah, but also by their handmaids, like Sarah and Hagar, so also... Rachel and Leah, Bilhah and Zilpah. Uh, how many children do you have? Did it say there? Uh, twelve. They had the twelve, twelve sons and one daughter. But Jacob, oops, I don't want to go there yet. <coughs> but Jacob uh, showed his weakness too. He was a fraud, he was a cheat, and he uh, yet was a man that walked with God. He his name was changed to, from Jacob to Israel. After wrestling with the Lord all night, uh, your name will now be Israel, a man who has power with God. Israel, a man who has power with God. And his children would be the children of Israel. And the 12 sons would give names to the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, he had a favorite uh, son, <coughs> Excuse me. Who was Jacob's favorite son? Benjamin and Joseph and Benjamin. They were the two sons of Rachel. Yeah, they were his two favorite sons. Remember the coat, so to speak, coat of many colors, and like yeah. Uh, but uh, also one of the boys was Judah. You remember anything about Judah? He married a Canaanite, married a Canaanite woman. Okay. No, I believe Simeon or Reuben. Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. And then Judah. But... Uh, he mar no, he mar Judah married a Canaanite woman. Married a Canaanite woman. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, Judah is also the one that, uh, with his brother, said, let's not kill our brother Joseph, but let's do what? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites so we can get some money for him. And, uh, yeah. So Judah is the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Tamar. That's the first woman that's mentioned. What do we know about Tamar? Anybody remember Tamar? There's three Tamars in the Bible. Well, this particular Tamar... Um, Judah had, a, had three sons, and he looked for somebody uh, for his son to be his son's bride. And he found a woman by the name of Tamar. And so his son married Tamar. And he did what was displeasing in the Lord, and he died. And so according to the Jewish law uh, or the habits, and then 
the, the brother would marry the, the widow and raise up a family in his brother's name. So the second son of Judah then married, so to speak, Tamar. But he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he died. And Tamar said to Judah, okay, I need your third son. And Judah said, let me think about it for a while, <laughs> okay? And he procrastinated, and he procrastinated, and I'm sort of cutting through all the embellishments that are in the scriptures. He procrastinated and waited, and Tamar finally gave up hope, and she just dressed herself very provocatively as a prostitute and sat on the side of the road. And when Judah passed by, he saw her and said, uh, why don't we get together and have a good time? And so they got together, he not knowing who this woman really was. And she conceived and she gave birth to Perez and Zira. Perez and Zira. And you can read the rest of the story. I think it's Genesis chapter 38 where uh, in order that um, before they would have relations, uh, Tamar asked for a, uh, something from Judah that would reassure that, you know, he, you know, and he, he gave it, to, I don't know if it was staff, I think it was the staff, yeah, and the signet ring. And uh, later on, when she laid claim, he said, Judah, these are your children. He said, no way. And she's, in fact, he wanted her put to death because she had been unfaithful to the, the family. But she said, it's you. And she brought out the staff and the ring and said, here, these are your children. So uh, a little bit of a sordid story in the lineage of our Savior. So Tamar and Judah's child, Perez, is the father of Hezra and the father of Ram, the father of Amenadab. We don't know much about all those people. Amenadab was the father of Nation. This takes us all the way up to the time of Moses. We read about Nation in uh, the book of Numbers. He was the leader of the tribe of Judah. And when the tabernacle was built, Nation was one of the first to bring animals for sacrifice and gifts for the dedication of the, of the tabernacle, a leader of the people. Nation was the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz. Oh, we are starting to recognize names, aren't we? Father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Mother was Rahab. So fa Salmon and Rahab were the mother and father of Boaz. What do we know about Rahab? She hid somebody in, in her house. She wasn't a Jew. No, she was not a Jew. Yeah. And, and neither was Tamar. Neither was Tamar. They were Canaanite. So not exactly a purebred line. Interesting, isn't it? And Tamar, uh, remember when they sent uh, spies, one from each tribe into the land of Canaan to spy out the, the city of Jericho and the land? Uh, there were... There were, there were Two, and two of the spies went to Jericho, and uh, Rahab hid them from the men of Jericho. Otherwise, the men of Jericho would have, yeah. So, um, but what was Rahab's occupation? She was a prostitute, yeah. I have a question. Wasn't Tamar Judah's sister? Judah's sister? No. Of the 12? 12 boys, you mean? No, Dinah. Dinah was the daughter. Dinah was our. No. Yeah. So Rahab, the prostitute, Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. And I think we know you've studied Ruth and heard about Ruth. What's unique about Ruth being in the Savior's line? especially when you think we're starting from Abraham. Ruth was not, not, she was of Moab. 
uh, a Moabite woman. And, uh, and there's a history behind Moab and Ammon that's not so pretty as well. Remember when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed and Lot ran away and his wife turned into a pillar of salt? He had two daughters. And eventually, as they're on, out there and the daughters say, well, there's no men left for us to marry and have children by, the two daughters say, let us lie with our father. And so they get Lot drunk, and then they have sexual relations, incestuous relations with their father, and, he, and uh, each daughter gives birth to a child, and one is Moab, and the other is Ammon. And if you read in the Bible in the Old Testament about the Moabites and the Ammonites, they're continually the enemies of God's people. So again, quite a, quite a history here. Uh, and over the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of King David. King David. Now in the line of Jesus, there's one other woman, but not in this particular section. We're going to look at those three sections, but this is from Abraham up to David, there's Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and then there is King David and King, ba King David and Bathsheba, and we know all about that too. King David killed Uriah, so we look in the lineage of our Savior, and we find all these names. We also find that uh, uh, he is descended from. From prostitutes, a deceit and a fraud, Jacob, adulterer and a murderer. Okay. Jim? They don't? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, they, they believe there's a Jesus. Oh, they, they believe this Jesus was there. Yeah, they believe this Jesus was there. The one they kill, yeah. So. Oh, okay. So, so we've come to the end. It's been an hour, so let's let's close quickly. Um, what do we learn from the genealogy? If we were to take this home, all things are written to teach us, and here it is a genealogy, a list. Um, and we have all these genealogies in the Bible, and you know that. Uh, I shared the story once before. I think I, when I was a young kid going to a Lutheran school, got about third grade or so, I determined I was going to read my Bible, and I would sit down on the porch on the swing, and I'd take my Bible, i start at Genesis, in the beginning God made the heavens, and I get to chapter 5. And that's as far as I would get, because then Adam gave birth to Seth, and Adam lived so many years, and he died, and Seth gave, they gave birth to so-and-so, and he lived so many years, and I just... And then... Um, and sometimes I make it all the way to, uh, I believe, chapter 10 and 11 of Genesis after the Tower of Babel and you have the genealogies of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And, I, and so one, one, one Sunday, I, one Saturday morning, I decided I, I'm going to give up reading the Old Testament. I'm going to read the New Testament. So I opened up to Matthew chapter 1. <laughs> and there's the genealogy. So anyway. But what, do, what, what can we take home from the genealogies? We just look at it and really ponder it. Saints and sinners. Saints and sinners. Saints and sinners, yeah. God still worked through it all to bring his son, our Savior, into the world. Carolyn, you were going to say? I didn't even be on there too. Yeah, we'd be listed with the saints and with the sinners, part of Jesus' family. Yeah. yeah. And it also shows us that I think that even though you wait thousands of years, 
Abraham. That's where it started. You know, and that's thousands of years before our Savior was born. And you wait and you wait, and God always fulfills his promises. God always fulfills his promises. And Martin Luther said this, Christ is the kind of person who's not ashamed of sinners. In fact, he even puts them in his family tree. If the Lord does that here, so ought we to despise no one, but put ourselves right in the middle of the fight for sinners and help them. So also Martin Luther had a little bit of a mission outreach thought when he read through this. But Jesus is not ashamed of sinners, not ashamed of sinners. So let's close by reading Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse 18. And someone have that? Uh, just turn to Matthew 1, verse 18. And this comes right after we hear about all the descendants of Jesus. Uh, and Rick, would you please? Jesus means he will save his people from their sins. Comes to save us from our sins. And you notice right away here in chapter 1, one of those 60 references to the Old Testament. Thus it was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet. Okay. So um, with that, we'll close. Uh, Jesus, sinners, does receive. Um, let's... Uh, there's four verses. Let's, let's pray these words together, okay? Jesus, sinners, does receive. O oh, may all this saying ponder, who in sin's delusions live and from God in heaven wander. Here is hope for all who grieve. Jesus, sinners, does receive. We deserve but grief and shame, yet his words, rich grace revealing, Pardon, peace, and life proclaim. Here their ills have perfect healing. Who with humble hearts believe, Jesus sinners does receive. I, a sinner, come to you with a penitent confession. Savior, show me mercy too. Grant for all my sins remission. Let these words my soul relieve. Jesus sinners does receive. Oh, how blessed it is to know, were as scarlet my transgression, it shall be as white as snow by your blood and bitter passion. For these words I do believe, Jesus sinners does receive. Amen. Amen. So, God bless. I probably stood halfway in your way of seeing the thing. Yeah, so. So, good. And there are uh, some refreshments there yet. So, thank you. And don't forget, grab a card. If you haven't filled out a card, please do so. I'm going to send it to our sister, Joni. Joni Morton. Just fill one out, address.